LA office building sells for $153.5 million, $115 million less than its sale price wow. a decade ago. This is a market watch story. Um, page nine. Page nine. Here we go. LA Aon Center, a 62-story office building. Rob, can you pull up the picture to see what it looks like? Was sold for $153 million, marking the largest fourth quarter deal for office space in the Western United States as reported by Newmark. Group Inc., the buyer, Carol Wood LPA, L.A.-based private equity firm, acquired the building located in downtown L.A.'s financial district. The property was 64% lease at the time of sale with diverse tenants, including Aon and Morrison and uh, uh, Forster. Uh, The sale price represents a significant drop from its 2014 purchase price of $268 million. Unfreaking believe. <laughs> Vinny, from two hundred and sixty-eight million to one hundred fifty-three million dollars, uh, the pandemic-induced challenges in the in office occupancy contributed to this decrease. With the U.S. office occupancy rate ranging from forty percent to sixty-five percent, spring of twenty twenty-three. Tom, you hear the story. How much of this is California? How much of this is real estate? How much of this is interest rates? How much of this is just working from home? Uh, this is California number one. This is seventy. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna say this. This is 70% California. You want to know why? If that building was in the middle of Miami, Adam, downtown Miami, right now, it would be 80% leased in, in 90 days because there's it's so many uh, businesses have come to South Florida. There's plenty of demand. So why is it selling like this in California? There's not demand. Why is there not demand? It's California policies, taxation, you know, uh, downtown crime, homelessness all around downtown. Where do you go if you work in that building? Where do you go for lunch? You got to see it downtown, folks. It's really bad. So I say 70% California and probably 25% interest rates. Mm -hmm. That's kind of driving it. But look who's buying it. As we predicted, a private equity firm swooping in, buying undervalued assets. Ladies and gentlemen, that's their business, and they're and they're conducting their business very well right now. But that's my take. Yeah, Dana White said it best. Miami's the new L.A. So you saw what he said when he was talking. I think to the Nelk boys. So shout out to you, Dana White. By the way, Miami's pretty packed, guys. We're good. We don't need anyone yeah, else. Right, the price I'm, is already I, up. I'll, yeah. But Miami is the new L.A. Rob, show the picture. Um, L.A. used to be where all the cool kids hung out. Now it's all Miami. L.A. used to be the scene. Now it's all Miami. Sorry, it is what it is. Um, but the reality is this, what we've learned since COVID is that residential real estate has skyrocketed as far as supply and demand and commercial real estate has plummeted. And whether you call it WFA or WFH work from home or work from anywhere, a lot of companies simply don't need all that space. And some deals, private equity firms, whether it's even BlackRock, that's buying up a lot of uh, residential stuff. And we talked about Blackstone, whatever's going on with that, the mortgage stuff with Brandon. Uh, They just don't need all that space, and people are just working from home. And whether it's California and all the ridiculous laws and red tape that they put up there and people leaving and Gavin Newsom being the U-Haul employee of the year multiple times over – it is what it is at this point in California. So, Pat, you, if you if you bought something like that, if like you you have it now, you got it basically for half off, right? It was half off. Give or give or take. Give or take. How long do you think somebody could just buy that and sit on it? Will, will it go back up in price? O- only if you're able to take that from sixty percent to ninety percent, eighty five percent. The key to selling a property, like you know, we're looking at properties right now. The proper one property we're looking at is smaller. But it's leased at 80%. It's 50% more than another property that's bigger, but it's 100% vacant. People are not buying the property for, you know, just how big and massive and beautiful the property is. They want to know who's leasing it, who's already in there, and how many years. So the way they'll look at it is they'll look at the list and they'll say, we have 22 tenants. These guys got 19,000 square feet, and their lease expires 2029. These guys have such and such, their lease expires 2032. Oh, wow, it's a 10-year lease. Yeah, these guys, and then you're like, ah, oh, okay, average about seven and a half years. Got it. Okay, here's the offer. They do the math. Here's the offer for the property. It's simple as uh, what it is. So if a company like that is buying it, they know they're going to fill this place up and they're going to make their money. They're not worried about whether they're going to lose money or not. The average person that buys it, it's going to be a different story. These guys are mathematicians. They get it. Everything they buy, it's purely logical, not emotional, very rarely emotional. And if it's emotional, it's because it's a very well-known building. This is not an emotional building. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.